this was a surprise the creator had for me. And because I wasn't happy about the surprise, and I yelled at her about it, I now have to read it out loud. I wasn't originally supposed to read it out loud because it was over the word count. But because I got pissy with her, I have to read it out loud. Very good thing that Meg's not home. And hopefully I don't lose my marbles while reading this. Tipper goes to Taco Bell, we upload it. This isn't even the original story. I couldn't even find the original story. This one was a re-uploaded version that's on archive of her own. Let's get it over with. Rating. Explicit. Archive warnings. Graphic depictions of violence. Major character death. Rape non-con underage. Category. Female with male. Gravity Falls. No bloody... Mm. Relationship. Dipper Pines and Mabel Pines. Mm -hmm. Characters. Stan Pines. Jesus. Mabel. Dipper. A taco. Several Taco Bell employees. Additional tags. Incest. Sibling incest. Uh, obviously we know it's incest. What other incest would it be? Taco Bell. Dipper goes to Taco Bell. Poor Dipper. Disturbing themes. Shock fic. Freeform. Graphic depictions of corpses. Necrophilia. Plot twist. Shit. So much shit. Shit fetish. A shit fetish. A shit fetish. A shit fetish. Mm. You have been warned. Underage sex. Bad spelling and grammar. Oh, it just gets better and better. Blood and gore. Murder. Child murder. It's in English. It's a shame it's in English, because if it was in another language, I wouldn't have to do it. I could find, like, maybe a different, different, you know, foreign fanfic critic who could read it instead. I don't think there is any other... I mean, there's other fanfic critics, but I don't know if there's any ones that are, that are in other languages. <laughs> right then, this was re-uploaded back in June of 2022. The word count is 5,148 words. I mean, it's not too far over the word count, but still. One chapter, 674 comments, 832 kudos, 53 bookmarks, and over 100,000 hits. Dipper goes to Taco Bell. Re-uploaded. Orphan account, so the person who uploaded this doesn't even exist anymore. I'm not going to read the summary, because the summary pretty much gives away what happens in the story. The summary is just to warn people that the story is awful, which I didn't need a warning about that, because I already read the story that was inspired by this. Wendy's. The Wendy's story. Mabel, Mabel goes to Wendy's. Yes. <laughs> Note. Help. I bit my dick off. Lovely. And it's a blob of, a blob of bloody text! I mean, at least it's still readable. At least there's, like, every time there's a new sentence, it starts a new line. So I guess it could be worse, but still... Right. It was a normal day in Gravity Falls, Oregon. Well, as normal as Gravity Falls gets anyways. Dipper Pines was reading his book in Mabel. His twin sister was wondering what he was doing. Dipper, are you going to keep your nose buried in that strange book of yours all summer? You gotta go out. Go on an adventure. Mabel exclaimed. Not now, Dipper said quietly. I'm trying to decode this. He was looking at a cryptogram that said... I'm not even gonna read that. Dipper was officially stumped. He could not figure out what it meant, and it seemed very mysterious to him. Grunkle Stan is gonna take us out to the diner for lunch, Dipper. Mabel exclaims. Exclaims. Dipper, however, was not in the mood for the diner. He was publicly humiliated the last time he went, and he thought the food wasn't very good anyway. Mabel, I don't want to go to the diner. Dipper said solemnly. I want to go somewhere else. But there is really nothing else in town, unless you count the Taco Bell near the forest, Mabel replied. Taco Bell. Dipper's ears perked up. He had never eaten at a Taco Bell before, and ever since last week he had been crazy, craving for Mexican food for some reason. Why don't we go to Taco Bell today? Dipper asked. Taco Bell? Grunkle Stan questioned. Why do you want to go there? It smells like the bathroom when it gets clogged. I had my heart set on pancakes, Mabel moaned. 
Listen, you can go to Taco Bell if you want to, but don't come crying to me when you smell like an expi like expired onions. Fine, I will, Dipper said harshly. Don't let the door hit you on the way out, Grunkle Stan said, but he as he was exiting the mystery shack, the door hit him on the way out. Ah, ha, 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 said Grunkle Stan. He was laughing. You don't say. Christ. So anyways, Mabel and Grunkle, Scan, Grunkle Stan went to the diner while Dipper tried to find the Taco Bell. He had brought with him his books and a couple of bucks, but finding the Taco Bell was harder than he had previously thought. He had been looking around town for what seemed like days. The mystery book wasn't helping him either. Until he saw a flicker of a sign in the forest, he went into the forest. Why would there be a Taco Bell in the forest? Dipper asks himself. After hiking for about an hour, Dipper finally, fi finally got to the Taco Bell. But it sure didn't look like any Taco Bell he'd ever seen. It was surrounded by a barrage of giant oak trees in an open field, completely different from the rugged terrain of the Oregon forest. The open field was covered with at least three layers of pine needles, which got the attention of Dipper. He stuck his hand into the pine needles. Ow! Dipper shouted. A pine needle poked him. It hurts. The restaurant, Taco Bell, looked like a silo, sort of. Well, it was very cylindrical. The outside had a rusty had rusty picnic tables and looked like no one ever used them at all. Dibble walked up to the restaurant's door. There's a ton of typos. I'm not going to screen cap every single one I see. Should I go in there? Dibble asked himself. I'm starting to have second thoughts. Why is there a small desolate Taco Bell in this forest miles from the nearest road? But I guess it's my only option. Mabel and Grunkle Stan are probably done with lunch right now. And they were. Mabel wondered why Dipper hadn't come back yet, but Grunkle Stan didn't give a damn. So Dipper entered the restaurant, but he was relieved to see that the interior was normal, except for its high ceilings. There were also no customers inside, but Dipper thought that was normal, considering how the franchise was so isolated. He went up to the counter. There was only one cashier working at the registers. A very old, slightly deaf, bald, out of his skull cashier. Dipper decided what he wanted to order, then approached the register. Excuse me, I ha I'll have... We only got tacos, the cashier interrupted. Okay, I guess I'll have a taco then, Dipper said. What did you say? The cashier yelled. I said I want a taco, Dipper yelled back. Okay then, the cashier said, then went to the back for a few minutes. When he came out, he was carrying Dipper's taco. That's one dollar. I guess they're from Boston, the cashier said. Dipper gave him the money and went to sit down at the least grimiest table. He bit into the hot, spicy, juicy taco filled with its thick, pure meat, mild, tantalizing black beans, and sour, fluffy sour cream. He enjoyed every single bite of the perfectly cooked taco and still tasted it in his mouth after he swallowed it. But as he was about to bite into it a second time, he felt a churning movement inside his body, something that he had felt often. Uh-oh, Dipper said. Then rushed to find a laboratory. Man, that really went through me, Dipper said to himself. For some reason, the bathrooms were hidden in a corner, far from the counter, and far from the table he was sitting at. When he walked in, he found that the bathrooms were surprisingly clean for a fast food restaurant anyway. And Dipper found this suspicious. All the stalls were full, and no one was using the urinals. Well, right on cue, someone walked out of one of the stalls. Dipper didn't pay much attention to who was walking out, but he was wearing all black and had a plastic bag with him. Dipper just had to go. Unfortunately, he didn't make it in time. He checked his pants and found the worst of all. Ugh. Diarrhea, Dipper said. Ugh. I don't know where this is going. He was about to leave the stall when he noticed a bulge in his pants. I'm beginning, I'm beginning to think that the Mabel Goes to Wendy's story was just a rip-off of this one, because it has, like, the same things going on. I think something similar happened with her. He touched the bulge, and once he touched it, he knew exactly what it was. It was an erection. How would he not know what an erection is? He's had a penis his entire life. I'm sure he's gotten erections before that. He found himself completely aroused after touching it. He was already aroused, and started to do some do it some more. Eventually he was ready to hardcore masturbate. He didn't know what was arousing him, but he knew he was aroused. 
He took off his blue shorts and soiled underwear, revealing his medium-sized but not small penis. The tip was bright and red, like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Thank you for ruining Rudolph for me. Really appreciate it. Dipper started to yank his Johnson harder and faster. The five-incher was getting pumped. Dipper soiled... Dipper's soiled hand started to feel bits of pre-cum on his dry fingers. Eventually, the medium-sized dick couldn't take it anymore and burst into an explosion of cum. The cum got all over the walls and toilet, and Dipper felt proud. He had creamed himself for the first time, but he was upset that it was not over Wendy. Oh yes, the love interest is named Wendy. No, Dipper thought. All this is not enough for me. I need to release all of this. With his erection still active, Dipper began yanking his penis again. It was much quicker, and Dipper came, cummed quicker. It was bigger release than last time, and it began to rain Dipper's seed. Dipper felt more proud than last time, his heart about to burst from all the droplets of cum coming, falling down from the ceiling. He felt as happy as he felt on the day of the first snowfall of the year. He stuck his tongue out to taste the cum, shiny from the faulty fluorescent lighting in the bedroom. He, he tasted it, and he thought it was one of the best tasting things in the world. Ugh. Better than the largest chocolate bar. Better than the rarest pig. You don't eat pigs rare. And better than the taco he was having earlier. By now, he couldn't stop. He couldn't leave now and miss it on this great masturbation adventure. He wanted to taste the cum. He scraped a handful of it off of the and put it in his dirty wet mouth. He grabbed another and another and another. He was getting more aroused by consuming the cum, and then he released another load. So that's where it's all coming from. Tipper said to himself, come all over his face and teeth. Of course it's coming from you, you idiot. Dipper came up with a solution to get more hardcore adult masturbation experience. He was going to put it into action. He tilted his head down, sat down on the cum-covered ground, and grabbed his hardened Johnson and stuck it in his mouth. Once it was family in, Dipper began to suck on the very hard rod. He sucked it like a lollipop. He got the country fair a while back. It tastes a lot like it, too. I hired... No, it... D mm. No comment! The legs were so expertly over his shoulders that he could could have been a gymnastic gymnast, I should say. The more he sucked on his hard dick, the more he aroused legs shook. Eventually, just when he was going to give out, he came in his mouth. It was the best thing he had ever experienced. And kept on performing filetto on himself. As he was stimulating himself orally, he accidentally fell over to his side. He broke from his his penis and cummed on the floor. The floor was covered in so much of Dipper's cum he started to make a snow angel in the cum or cum angel. He was eating some of the process but then he looked to his side and immediately became so hard that the red tip was touching his short pubic hair. He saw what was causing it. He saw his underwear covered in dark brown feces. He held up his underwear, which was covered in the cum-filled floor, and marveled at its erotic beauty. The faces were so beautifully ejaculated, so smooth in its sticky brownness, so perfectly felt in Dipper's white hands. He wanted his shit. He, uh, he held the brown underwear like a fish on a lure, and put his sticky... <laughs> and put his sticky white lips to the brown his tongue was his tongue was rubbing the cap all over his whitey tighty whites making his mouth all brownish white mess he was biting into into he was fucking it in his mouth it was more stimulating than ever before. He now knew that he didn't need Wendy or Mabel or any of the other girls in Gravity Falls. All he needed was a big pile of his shit. He took a scop, a scoop of the faces. He had a lot of diarrhea and began to spread it all over his neck. 
every time he spread the crap, it was, he was getting more and more aroused. Once his dick was completely brown, he came again. It filled up all the spots in the stalls that weren't covered in dippers come once again. Dipper took big scoops of cum and consumed it in large gulps. Now Dipper had to put the brown sticky faces all over his penis again, and boy, he did he do a good job. The brown stuff was all over his external genitals and his testicles. He had cummed a few times here and there. Now his beautiful brown genitals needed to be cleaned. But Dipper didn't have any cleaning supplies, so he started to suck the shit off. Oh, I'm very glad I haven't eaten yet, because I would be regurgitating it all right now if I was. He brought his erection up to his mouth and began to suck. This time he made it very clear to lick the, <laughs> lick the faces off with his tongue as soon as his tongue touched his dippy cum. He was having the most fun he had ever had in that bathroom stall and forgot who he was, where he lived, where he was. But what he was eating, all was on his mind was his sweet cum. He just thought of a great idea. Dipper took a scoopful of diary and a scoopful of cum and put it in the toilet. He flushed it, but before it went all the way down, he grabbed the wet pile of shit and cum and shut it in mouth. He was consuming all the shit, cum, and toilet wall and it tasted great. He kept on doing it for God knows how long, and one of the times he hit his head against the toilet rim. Dipper's brain must have been knocked out of place at that time, because this time, instead of putting the shit and cum in his food hole, he started to lather it on his penis again. He wanted more of his Johnson, but that would be a fatal mistake. Once it was covered again, he put it in his mouth and began sucking, but did it too hard. As he was sucking and coming, he accidentally bit on his dick. As soon as he tasted the blood, he broke out of coitus and saw his lacerated penis. He saw a mix of blood and cum coming out of it, like ah lava, and his erectile muscles popping out. Dipper grabbed at it and grimaced in pain. He winced at it and looked horrified. He snapped out of it all and tried to figure out a solution to the castration. He put some old diary and cum on it, but that didn't stop the bleeding. Dipper spit out the piece of dick that he had bit off and tried to reapply, but that didn't work. No matter how many times he tried to reattach it, they all failed. He put more of his reproductive fluids on the castration, but it only made the penis swell up like a good year blimp. Dipper was licking the blood off to try to stop it, but the blood was coming faster than he could lick. He was now in ultimate pain and felt nothing like this. He screamed as loud as he could and felt like no one could hear him. He was screaming louder and louder, saying, Help, I bit my dick off. He was going insane. He started to bang against the stall, screaming help as loud as he could yell. After f a full five minutes with a large mix of blood coming and feces on the floor, he was banging his head against the stall. The banging was louder than the loudest thunderstorm and yet no one came to help. Dipper was alone in the bathroom, alone in the stall, alone with his beloved dick, now near death, and unfortunately he was near death. After one final blow to the head, the now screaming Dipper was now as silent as a Christmas Eve. He fell to the floor, eyes turning skyward, and fell in a mix of his own blood coming feces. <clears throat> and I would love to say that's the end of the story, but it's not. There's a more. Of course there's bloody more. At the mystery shack, Mabel was feeling very worried about Dipper, so she went off to try to find him. She went off into the forest first. She knew where it was, and surprisingly got there in less time than Dipper. As she entered the newly cleaned door, she immediately noticed the one spitting taco on one of the tables, and immediately knew it was Dipper's. She rushed into the men's bathroom. She liked to use the urinals, and rushed into a random stall. It was her brother's. Mabel looked how messy the stall was, how it was used to do the deed. Her pink sneakers were sticky from stepping into the reddish-brown mess of fluids. She walked around the messy stall for a bit, then saw the most horrid sight she could imagine, Dipper's corpse. She was welled up with tears at the sight of it and began to cry. 
as she was crying, she sat down in a pile of blood faces and come to look at Dipper's lifeless face. It was beautiful, as his smooth facial features complemented the circle of cum around his lips. Oh, Dipper, Mabel said through her tears, let me clean the white stuff off of your lips. Mabel brought Dipper's head up to hers and she kissed him. After pulling out of the kiss, Mabel enjoyed it, so she kissed him again. She didn't want to let go of Dipper, not now, not when he had just died. He was her brother, after all. She held Dipper's naked corpse in her arms, and she felt a tingling feeling in herself. A secret daddy sighed. No one would care if we just did it right. He's dead now, and I know I would know in this restroom stall, Mabel thought. She immediately came up with an answer. She pulled Dipper's head up to her head and kissed him again. Only it was a French kiss. Once Mabel was done, she put the body on the floor. And then Mabel got down on the fluid floor, too. Mabel started to go on a kiss-crazy frenzy with Dipper that made it look like Dipper was alive. Tongues went into Dipper's deceased mouth, scraping the feces and cum off the roof. <laughs> She was shaking even more now, and her tongue was touching Dipper's. She unzipped her jeans, slowly slid them off, and threw them at the wall. They stuck there from the cum. She revealed her nice, clean, exposed virgin vagina. She took Dipper's corpse, not noticing the internally bleeding penis, and brought it closer to the cervix. She rubbed her clitoris for arousal purposes before she stuck it in. Once the dick was family and she finally felt joy in her life, she loved the feeling of losing it to her dead brother's body and started to get the oddest feeling. She lost it. She finally lost it. She squealed in happiness and started to French kiss Dipper harder. Her tongue almost touched Dipper's vulva. Uvula? Uvula. She kept holding on to his lacerated dick in her vagina and sloshed her tongue around Dipper's mouth. She kept pulling in and out of Dipper's stick. Blood was getting all over her urethral walls, not noticing one bit. She did not want to leave the body, not now. She would kill herself if it meant there be in coitus forever. If only Dipper could kiss her back. After what seemed like hours, it wouldn't fit in. Mabel finally took looked down at the now pretty messed up penis. Mabel couldn't look away. It was now swollen to the size of a head. A whole mix of rainbow colors still spewing lifeless cum. Mabel vomited on it, which only made it worse. It grew bigger and bigger. Oh, Dipper, she said softly. Then Mabel started to scream. She was horrified at the sight of it and barfed again. She tried to put a giant mix of blood, cum, vomit, and feces on the dick, but it didn't work. She tried to suck it all off, but found herself enjoying the sucking and the taste of Dipper's penis blood. She kept sucking on it, tasting the blood, and touching and fondling Dipper's dead erectile muscles. She was ecstatic. She was more than happy than she had ever been. More happy than she, ha than she was before. As she was squealing with, the, 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 with delight, the stall door started to open a crack. Mabel took notice of this. Huh? She asked. The door started to open more. It wasn't locked. Well, obviously... Mabel started to get nervous. She didn't want to go to jail for necrophilia. She was only a child who bit off more than she could chew. She got too ahead of herself after lusting after a twin brother for so long. If it was the police, she had no hope. She hoped it was just another Taco Bell employee who would listen to her help her out. The stall door finally bursted open. Standing in front of it was a man dressed in black. He had a Taco Bell logo sewn onto his... on the left of his face jacket. He was wearing squeaky shoes that squeaked across the bathroom floor. He was wearing dark sunglasses. The mysterious man walked into them... walked up to the two of them slowly. Mabel stood up on her feet, fear and blood on her face. The man stared at Mabel for a long time, until he finally said... Are you supposed to be in this bathroom, young lady? Mabel was shaking with horror now. She turned to face Dipper's naked, violated, dead body and turned to face the man again. M mister I, I didn't I intend to do this to my, my br 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 brother, Mabel said, shaking with tears in her eyes. The man brought himself closer to Mabel's face. Sir, you're y y in my personal space, Mabel tried to manage. 
The man was inspecting a red spot on Mabel's cheek. After several seconds, the man touched the spot, trailed his finger in it, and put the finger in his mouth. Blood, the man whispered to himself. W -w -w what did you say, sir? Mabel asked him, not understanding what he was saying. Little girl, do you know what is what that is on your cheek? The man asked. Mabel repeated what the mysterious man did to her cheek and said back to him, it, It's b blood. And with the blood being on your cheek, have you developed, shall we say, a desired taste for it? The man asked back. Mabel did not notice the retractable chisel in his right hand. Uh, um, y yes, I didn't m mean to. I just, shh, the man quieted her. If you like the addicting taste of it, why didn't you say so? And, without warning, the man cut her across the chest with a chisel. She screamed at the pain of it. Blood started to pour out of the diagonal cut fast, almost covering her stomach. You can lick that up. Your blood probably tastes better than that kid's, the man said, pointing to Dipper. Then the man gave another cut across her face. She screamed again, louder this time. Now you can get the blood close to your face. And just to make sure you're silent, the man slit her across the neck. She could not scream this time. The man went into her neck and pulled out three vocal cords. The man stretched the cords out and he jumped roped with them while slashing Mabel across the face several times. When her face was cut so many times that her nose fell off, the man decided it was time for the scalping. He took out a bigger knife and slammed it right above Mabel's eyebrows. The man gripped the knife's handle still in her face and began to make a deep cut. The man put all the strength to do it because he decided to make the hardest part first. He tried to do it right into the skin, but sadly it would not do the job he liked. Mabel's head was now topless with the top of his skull exposed and violently cut so that you can see her brain inside of the skull. To pieces of the muscles and flesh were still attached to Mabel's hairy scalp, so the man cut them off. The scalp was now thin as skin and still full of Mabel's hair. He hung the scalp, scalp up on the hook of the door. It would be his prize, something he kept for himself. Now the man prepared for the rest of the body. What he wanted to do next was to make it rain. Not water, as you may think. He wanted it to rain something else. He got down to Mabel's blood-covered slash chest, grabbed her not fully developed breast, and began to cut off Mabel's nipples. Once he was done, the blood started to come out, like old faithful geyser. He was amazed by the sight of the fountain of blood and began to dance around the stall, stepping in all the fluids that were on the floor. When the blood was starting to flow a little less slowly, the man moved on to the legs. The man hung Mabel's nipples up to the scalp, the nips were his prize too, and started to cut Mabel's legs. He started to cut faster than a race car driver on a smooth asphalt track. To cuts kept appearing on her kneecaps until the cap bone was exposed. By that time, her lower legs and her body were only attached by a thin string of cartilage. Then the man moved on to her toes. With a knife as sharp as a knife, he cut every one of her little toes off. Mabel body was losing so much blood that she started to flatten out. The place where it was mostly coming out of was her toes. The toe blood was making a sea of red on the floor. The man, now with his Taco Bell fleece jacket splattered with red on it, dug now dug the knife into Mabel's left foot. He began to make another cut, similar to what he did to her scalp, and began to cut the skin off of the foot. The skin was much better than what he did to the scalp. He did the same to the other foot, and then hung the skin up next to the scalp. Mabel's feet were now just a big mess of flesh, muscle, and blood and nerves. Mabel, who was still alive, how would she still be alive, was now completely exposed to all the cuts she was getting, her mouth hanging open like a gaping person. The blood was already covering her chest. Since the man actually had a soul, he didn't want to subject the little girl to the misery she was about to endure. So he took the long knife and stabbed her in the middle of her chest, where her heart was. Blood pulled out of it more than her cut-off nipples did. Once, the, once most of the blood was done spewing, the man got, out, got down near Mabel's bloody vagina. He very carefully took his knife, got down near the cervix, and stuck the knife knife's blade up the hole. While in Mabel's cock cave, the man was rotating the knife, cutting up the walls of Mabel's egg chamber. The tip finally got inside and very carefully nipped every one of Mabel's fallopians. It was a hard job. 
He had to be very careful. He had done it many times before, but today wasn't his best day. He accidentally slit some of the sides of Mabel's vagina, cutting into the muscles surrounding it. The man was very embarrassed. Shit, hopefully no one will notice that, he said to himself. He took the knife out of Mabel's hole, with ovaries and two fallopians on the blood-covered blade. The man got out a plastic ba trash bag and scraped the knife on it, making the contents on it go into the bag. But since the knife's handle was covered in more blood than it usually was, he accidentally let it slip, and it dug into Mabel's right shoulder. Perfect, the man said ominously. The man got out a pair of vinyl gloves and put them on his hands. He gripped the knife tightly, wanting a deeper cut than he had before. After a while, after digging and digging and digging, the man's knife got through to the other side. Once the man saw the job he did, he threw the arm in his trash bag. He felt great pride and felt that he could easily achieve his goal now. So he went to the other side of Mabel's nearly skinned body and began to cut that arm off. It was easier to do than the other one, surprisingly. And once he was done with that, he threw the arm into the garbage bag. Mabel's body was now almost flat due to all the blood loss. The man tasted some of it and thought he should get a jar for later. Now for the legs. The man did the same with her legs, and they felt like they were getting easier to cut off each time. The legs were off, and the man threw it in the bag. Mabel's body was flat now. Almost all the blood in her body was gone. So they're trying to imply that we're like bloody water balloons, then. Embracing Mabel's dismembered body, he hugged it, licked it, the remaining blood off of it, and put the body in the bag. The man, now, just had noticed Dipper on the floor and figured he must have caused all this on the walls. Another one couldn't hurt, the man said to himself, and he started to cut off Dipper's appendages. He did it in the same order and same manner as Mabel's. It was done quickly, and he put all of it in a bag as well. Now it was time to clean up. As you can imagine, the bathroom stall was a big mess of fluids. The man got on a big chisel and started to chisel the cum off of the walls and into the bag. It took a long while, about two to three hours. Once it was done, he needed to clean the floor, so he went outside of the stall and got a mop. And he had... He got a mop that he had with him the whole time. He mopped up the whole mess of things off of the floor and into the bag, until the floors and walls looked respectable for a fast food bathroom anyway. The man got out some toilet cleaner and cleaned the toilet because it was way more messier than the staff itself than the stall itself. After a few minutes, the toilet was the toilet cleaning was over, and the stall was a clean as a new car. It smelled like it too. The man left the bathroom, and the stall waited, ready for its next victim. The man got out of the bathroom and went into the back kitchen of the Taco Bell. He got near the machine. It was an odd-looking machine. He had a crank on the side, a funnel on the top, and something shaped like a taco on the side, near the conveyor belt. Why do I have to do everything myself, the man questioned. He hung up his blood-stained jacket and sunglasses, revealing his Taco Bell employee uniform. uniform. It was sportless. The man took the bag and, one by one, started to put the body parts into the funnel. Once the bag was half empty, he kept putting more parts in, only this time he turned the crank. Once the bag was empty, popped out two tacos. They were... they weren't really tacos, really. They were actually human body parts in the shape of tacos. They went down the conveyor belt, and the employee, using spray cans, began to spray paint the body parts. Once they got to the Taco Bell tissue paper at the end of the conveyor belt, they looked like genuine tacos. The man grabbed one of the tacos, wrapped in its tissue paper, and went to the front counter. He handed it to the old man cashier, and then went back into the depths of the kitchen. Here's your taco, sir. The cashier said to the fast customer, You're welcome, Sue said, handing the cashier money. Right. This is the worst thing I've ever read. But I felt it needs to be preserved due to its significant... historical significance, if you will. I mean, it makes a good prank. I would have rather you not save this. Because if you didn't save this, I wouldn't have had to read it. This was a request, unfortunately. Bloody Christ, and it was such a waste of time, because the Mabel Goes to Wendy story was practically the same thing. It was the same thing. It was the same bloody thing. They just changed around the restaurants. This was... Ugh. I mean, at least I didn't go nutty. I think it's because I was... The story just went on and on and on. Ah. Right. Right then, I think I will take a small break before I edit the episode. 
Maybe, maybe I'll ask Meg to edit it. I mean, I should be able to edit, I don't know. No, I'll edit it. I don't want to subject Meg to this, so yes. Um, if you liked today's episode, please be sure to leave a like and leave a comment. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'd greatly appreciate it. I'll see you all in the next episode. Until then, cheerio. And please, 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 let the next story not involve this. Cheerio.